Hi, this is Ron Gannett and my dear wife Susie from Community Church here in Saddlebrook, Arizona. And we are going through what we're calling a suffering sampler. We're asking ourselves, why do Christians go through difficult times? What is God trying to accomplish through suffering? And today on number eight, I like to call it a passion for prayer. I believe that God sometimes uses difficult moments to help us to depend upon him in prayer in better ways. You know, if you ever uh, watch television, you see a tragedy where someone has died or someone has been hurt, you'll see the community gather together for a, a prayer vigil and they will hold up candles and they'll pray and sing. And you know, it's amazing. Those people may never attend a prayer meeting at a church, <laughs> but boy, in a moment like that, they, in a crisis, they pray. And I think, Susie, that this COVID-19 episode has caught us a lot of people to pray. And that's why I asked you to put together a little prayer uh, guide for us. What does it look like? Yes. You know, prayer is our lifeline all the time, but especially during this time, like Ron said. So we want to come in unison as a congregation to the throne of grace and bring our needs to the Father. So we made this little prayer guide, and you can get one just like it by going to your constant contact and hit print my prayer guide and you should be able to print one of these for yourself now then when you get it after you print it fold it in half and you will see that on the front page is listed the philippians 4 passage that is so familiar to all of us it says do not be anxious about the coronavirus oh it actually says do not be anxious about anything but that includes the coronavirus so it includes the finances it includes our health it includes everything we're going through not to be anxious but by prayer and petition to present those requests to god and then you'll find some uh, little thing by max lucato that if you read over that it'll bring a lot of encouragement to you then on the back side you'll see your daily dozen and this is what we would like you as a congregation to join with us every day in bringing these requests for the world for our community for our families for our church to the father to commit them to him in dependence on him then on the inside when you open it up you'll see a place where you can add your own personal prayer request and then also there's a place for you to put what have you learned during this time what have you learned about god what have you learned about yourself and fill that out send it in and we'll be using some of those in the future so let's all print this and let's all pray this every day together as a congregation well, thank you, Susie, for putting that together for us. And like she said, you can print yours off on the uh, on the constant contact. Push the button there. There's also another a second button that allows you to to uh, send this to another person, get them to sign up for our constant contact. But then there's a third button that's very important, and that is we would like to know what is God teaching you through COVID nineteen. What are you learning about God, and what are you learning about yourself? And please send that in to us because we would like to use that in these videos to share uh, with other people. But you know, this prayer guide is something that we hope you will use as a daily dozen because there are 12 categories where you can pray for our world down to your church and to your family. And prayer is vital. You know, if you read the Bible, uh, people in crisis always went to prayer. You go to Daniel chapter 2, uh, Daniel and his friends were part of the wise men in Babylon, captives. And you know, the king, Nebuchadnezzar, said had a dream, and he wanted people not just to interpret the dream, but to tell them what the dream was, so he would know that the interpretation was accurate. And he said, if you don't tell me, I'm going to kill all of you. Well, when that message got to Daniel and his friends, they were believers in God, they immediately got together and they prayed. And you know what they prayed? They said, God, have mercy on us. God, have mercy on us. And that night, God gave the interpretation of the dream to Daniel, and they woke up in the morning and said, praise be to God <laughs> for what he has done. If you jump from Daniel 2 over to Acts chapter 4, you find the same thing. Peter and John are in prison for preaching the gospel. 
They are threatened and released. They go to the believers and the believers are, are overwhelmed with fright. They pray to God in prayer. But you know, in their prayer, they say, God, give us boldness. Not just boldness, but give us great boldness. And you know that we're told that that house shook with the power of the Holy Spirit. In the morning, they had that great boldness and preached the gospel. There's just something about difficult times that make us depend upon God in prayer in ways that normally we would not. And I pray that the COVID-19 would, would help us learn in a fresh way to develop a prayer life that is more consistent that is very practical, but it's more than that, it is passionate to the God of heaven for what we want to see him do. I remember walking into a hospital room one time where a boating accident had occurred and one man had died and two men were in tragic, in difficult situations in the hospital and the family was gathered around and I said, let's pray together. And as I prayed, one of the brothers came and he started massaging my shoulders from the back as I prayed. And I thought, why is he rubbing my back? It's because he somehow, this is his way of saying, God, break through this situation. God, do something very special. And you know, we all have those feelings. We all have those passionate passions for God. And God uses these situations to help us know how to pray and have a greater passion to pray for him. You know, there's a God in heaven and he is in control. There is a God in heaven who is not surprised by the COVID-19, and he is the one that we need to allow to steer us in the direction that we need to go and to teach us how to pray. So, you know, they talk about having a new normal. I pray that the new normal is that we learn to defend, depend and to pray with God in a more passionate way. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, let, let's pray real quickly here before we go, shall we? Our Father in heaven, we just bow in your presence, thanking you for what you are doing, not just in our world to bring healing and, and peace, but Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in our hearts. Lord, I pray that you would create a new normal in each one of us. Help us, Father, to de develop a greater dependency upon you and the power of prayer. Oh, Father, use this these days we're walking through to take us on a journey that ends at the throne of the living God where we adore, worship, and depend upon you in fresh ways. So, Father, thank you for prayer. We ask that today you would increase and grant us a passion for prayer and dependence upon you. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.